Hello again, you YouTubers. Um, figured I'd give you guys a cool little uh, double upload for my first uh, couple uploads of videos here. I mentioned in my intro um, when I said that I was going to be doing an opening for the Egyptian God decks that I already had some uh, decks lined up for the gods that I had pre-made. And um, so I figured it might be cool if I maybe show those off uh, real quick. Let me start with the one that's going to be getting the least amount of changes from the structure decks, um, and that would be the raw deck. Uh, that being raw already kind of had its own support lined up. Um, it was given to it in Legendary Duelist's Rage of Raw set. Um, I will say that the only card that I am missing, because I just wasn't willing to spend the money on it as a single um, nor have I gotten the ability to buy a box yet of Rage of Ra. I haven't been able to find one. Um, uh, anyway, is the Ancient Chant. Unfortunately, that's the one thing that I don't have. Um, but I figured because I've got all the other good support anyway, that, um, you know, that wouldn't really be much of a problem. So, we'll go ahead and start off with this deck, the Ra deck. We got the Raw Engine, obviously. We've got the Immortal Phoenix mode. We've got Raw itself. Cool little alternate art variant, by the way, on that one. And then the Sphere mode. Um, and then the archetype I run with this one is Gravekeepers. I thought that would be, you know, a cool Egyptian y thing to go with it. So. For the monster lineup, we've got the Oracle, we've got the Visionary, two Shamans, and a Chief. And then a Prime Material Dragon, because it's got a good life point gain effect, and it's also a cool Golden Dragon. It's a good card, I like it. And then we've got a couple Commandants, um, that's for Necro Valley. We've got one Assailant, one Spear Soldier and one Descendant, and then three copies of the Spiritualist, and that's for bringing out a fusion. Um, there is a fusion for the Gravekeepers. And then I've got three copies of the Spy, and then two Priestesses, I believe it's two, yeah, two Priestesses, a Guard, and a headman. And then for non Gravekeeper monsters, I've got one Mudora and the three Ra's Disciples to help bring out the Ra fast. Cool little secret rare Ra there, too. All my other ones are common, unfortunately. That does it for the monster lineup for Ra. And then for spells, for spells, we've got Blaze Cannon couple Necro Valleys, and we've got Hidden Temples of Necro Valley, and Necro Valley Throne, a couple other um, support cards that both came out in uh, Maximum Gold. That's the only place that I've seen them, um, personally, if I'm wrong about that release, which I probably am. Um, you know, just let me know when they actually came out. The Hidden Temples of Necro Valley and Necro Valley Throne as well as two Gravekeepers Stell. And for the extra deck, just for the extra deck, a Rank Up Magic Numeron Force. I got Utopia Monsters in there just for fun. Um, just to fill out some more cards in the extra deck besides the Fusion Monster. Then I've got Rageki, Harpy's Feather Duster, uh, Smashing Ground for now. That might get replaced with something else. Mystical Space Typhoon, a couple of them. Uh, Lure of Darkness for drawing out. Foolish Burial for getting um, your Phoenix, pitching your Phoenix. E Provisions, getting some life back, usually used on Necro Valley. Unless your opponent destroys Necro Valley, your opponent's probably going to destroy Necro Valley anyway, because, you know, they probably don't like that graveyard lock. And then Spell Absorption for a little more life point gain. And then for the traps, we got Sun God Unification. 
couple Imperial Tombs of Necro Valley. Great counter trap as long as you have um, both the Gravekeeper and Necro Valley at the same time. You can pretty much negate anything you want. Uh, then we got Necro Valley Temple, Rite of Spirit. That's for the Gravekeeper support. Then we got a Mirror Force, Torrential Tribute, Call of the Haunted, and a couple of Dark Bribes. And that does it for the deck lineup. For the extra deck, we've got that Supernaturalist, Gravekeeper's Supernaturalist, the fusion monster. Stack three of them in there. Um, and the cool thing about this is that the Spiritualist, the uh, monster that summons this out, doesn't require polymerization. It's a special summon that just gives you the Gravekeeper fusion without polymerization, so you don't need polymerization in your deck picking up one of those spell card spaces. And then I've got Utopia Engine, got a Utopia Beyond, a Utopia Ray Victory, Utopia Ray V, um, S39 Utopia the Lightning, that cool maximum gold rare. So gauche with the gold all over it. I love it though. Utopia Ray, uh, Utopia, and then a few more Xyz cards. I might actually just take them out, honestly, since you know you don't actually need 15 cards in your extra deck anymore. And that's something that I unfortunately just learned about not that long ago. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still on, oh my gosh, you need to have 15 cards in your extra deck, otherwise you can't play it. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um, I'm not going to really show those other Xyz monsters, because that's probably, I'm probably just going to use the Gravekeepers and the Utopias. So that does it for the raw deck. Let's go ahead and move on to the Slifer deck. I'm going in order of the decks I like the most, by the way. Just FYI. I prefer Obelisk. He's my fave. I'll show that deck last. So, first, let's do Slifer. And for Slifer, we got, obviously, Slifer. I got a cool uh, prismatic secret rare version of an alternate art. It's super dark and, like, kind of hard to see, but when you got it, like, right up real close, like, you can see it. If you can see it pretty good, it's, it's really sick looking artwork. Like, it is just great. Slifer. And. The deck type for this one is an interesting one. I wanted to go with something that would be like a cool theme to go with Slifer. So I went with Winged Beast, kind of. Except for the other Nephthys monsters, which are not Winged Beasts. Everything else is a Winged Beast. And then also Black Wings. Which is kind of interesting. So um, I've got the Ritual Monster, Cerulean Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys, as well as the other smaller ritual monsters, the two star ones, Conductor, and also Devotee, those two. Then we got Sacred Phoenix, Dark Nephthys, Dark Samorg, and then we got some Black Wings, Kogarashi the Wanderer, Elfin the Raven, Sirocco the Dawn, and then we get into lower level monsters, Shura, Two copies of Shura. Two copies of Bora the Spear. One Zephyros the Elite. Um, both gets a card back to your hand, which is cool for Slifer if you have it on the field. And Special Summons itself. All for a little ping of 400 damage. It's not really that bad. Um, Decay the Illwind for Tuners. Kochi the Daybreak. Gale the Whirlwind. Two Blizzards. And then we got um, Special Summoner guys, Gust the Backblast, Harmatan the Dust, and Ghibli the Searing Wind. And then we've got the Nephthys supporters, the all the little lower level guys. I've only got one of each of them. So I've got the Disciple, the Matriarch, the Defender, and the Chronicler, and the Hand of Nephthys, last but not least. Sorry if it's hard to see some of these cards. I was trying to find up a better way to do this, and I'll probably will for future videos. But I'm trying to 
clearly say the names of all of them anyway so that you will at least hear those for sure. So that does it for the monsters on the Slifer deck. Let's move on to the spells. Rebirth of Nephthys, three copies of that. The ritual spell to bring out the ritual monsters. Last Hope of Nephthys. Um, if you don't know anything about the Nephthys uh, strategy, it's weird, but like you actually want to destroy your own monsters to bring their effects out. It's kind of interesting. So, Last Hope of Nephthys allows you to target one card you control, Nephthys card you control, and then a card your opponent controls, and destroy them both. But then usually you get a cool effect if you destroy one of your Nephthys cards. It says card, by the way. So, there's also like a counter trap that you can uh, sacrifice for that card as well. One Black Whirlwind, just to replenish the hand, which, t if you think about it, is good for Slifer too, so if you summon while you have Slifer out, you can bring a card right back to your hand, which will keep his attack up. Gold Sark, which when I get the Slifer deck, I might replace with the true name. I'm thinking about replacing this with the true name, so I can have card advance and the true name in the Slifer deck, and then put this Gold Sark into the raw deck. That's probably what I'm going to do. But um, we'll have to wait until I get the new decks in the mail to see what will happen with that. Cards for Black Feathers, more draw power. Pot of Avarice, more draw power. Raigeki, Dark Hole, actually want to destroy your own monsters, remember? So blowing up everything on the field is not so bad. Especially if you have a Sacred Phoenix out, you know, you blow up the whole field, but you get your, the effect of your Sacred Phoenix of Nephthys on the next turn. Smashing Ground, again, another tech card that I might tech out for something else. Ties of the Brethren, same. I might replace this with Card Advance instead. Brain Control, I'm going to have to replace this with the reprint, because this is an old version. Uh, Swords of Revealing Light, Double Summon, and my body is a shield, just in case um, I need to protect Slifer from something like Dark Hole or Mirror Force, or anything like that. Then we get on to Traps. And I've got Awakening of Nephthys, a couple copies of Awakening of Nephthys, a lot of Black Wing Traps, Black, Black Wing Backlash, Delta Crow Anti-Reverse, Black Thunder, Icarus Attack, um, Torrential Tribute, Dust Tornado, and Call of the Haunted. And then the extra deck for this one, I've got... Um, Full Armor Master, Blackwing Full Armor Master, Assault Blackwing, new from, I think it was from the Zex, no not Zexel, Arc 5, in the alternate version of Crow used Assault Blackwings instead of regular Blackwings. This is Assault Blackwing Onimaru the Divine Thunder, Blackwing Dragon, Chidori the Rain Sprinkling, Assault Blackwing Chidori the Rain Sprinkling, Blackwing Tamer Obsidian Hawk Joe, an interesting warrior type support monster for Blackwings. It's not really a, well I guess it is technically a Blackwing card, because there's Blackwing in the name, but it's a warrior type, not a Wing Beast type. You got Blackwing Armor Master, Blackwing No Thung the, no Thung, no Thung the Starlight, uh, Black Wing, Armed Wing, and there's, a, there's, there's like some other cards in there just to round it out to 15, but again, since you don't need them, I might consider taking them out, just because they're not necessary. And last but not least, let's get to the Opalisk deck. Just real quickly organizing myself. The Opalisk deck is a Summon Skull deck, which I thought was cool, mostly because Summon Skull is just a really boss monster. It always has been, ever since the beginning. And with that slightly recent support that it got, um, it turned out to be a really interesting uh, archetype to use. Not 100% Archfiend, mostly just Summon Skull, but with some Archfiend support in there to help um, round out the cards. So we've got Obelisk. Again, cool alternate art on the obelisk there. Love that art. I believe it is supposed to be, um, funny enough, 
it's supposed to be indicative of what happens in the manga when Yugi uses divine evolution on it. Yeah, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this particular alternate art is supposed to be showing that. Which is kind of cool, because eventually I'll have a copy of Divine Evolution to throw in here. That's where I'm putting Divine Evolution, at least for now, in this deck. I'm probably going to be planning on getting um, different single copies to put in the other decks when I eventually am able to find singles on the market. Uh, so far, I think they're all pre-sale, so... Anyway, we got Obelisk, Archfiend's Awakening, Couple copies of Summon Skull. Red Eyes Archfiend of Lightning, which is a Gemini retrain of Summon Skull, and it also has the Red Eyes in there. I'm not really sure why that's necessary, but um, it's a Gemini retrain, which actually helps you with the Fusion Summon monster, the Archfiend Black Skull Dragon. Um, that guy requires a normal. Archfiend monster and a normal Red Eyes monster. So there's also a retrain Red Eyes that I'll get to eventually. Mist Archfiend, another one there. Then I've got one Red Eyes, and then the Gemini Red Eyes, which I mentioned, which I just said. There it is. Red Eyes, Black Flare Dragon. So you can use those Gemini monsters to bring out the retrain of Black Skull Dragon, which is Archfiend Black Skull Dragon. So then for more monsters here, we got Doom Caliber Knight. A couple copies of Doom Caliber Knight. Just a real great fiend monster to negate whatever you want on the field. Archfiend Cavalry. Double Costin. One Stygian Street Patrol. Two Dark Resonators. A Force Resonator. And for now, um, a Dark Tinker. I'm ho hopefully going to be getting a copy of Red Resonator soon, and I'll be able to tech that out for Red Resonator instead. Three... Stygian Securities, one Sinister Sprocket. And then I've got three Skull Knights. Skull Knight number two. This monster is great for Tribute Summoning. Tribute Summon your Fiend, and then you bring out another one of these. So Field Swarming, obviously great for Obelisk. The Dark Hex Sealed Fusion, just a good Fusion tech card. And then I've got a bunch of blanks in here, because obviously until I get the new deck... I'm missing a bunch of monsters that I want to throw in here. So for now, that's the end of the monsters. So then for the spells, we have Archfiend Palabrinth, Makiyu the Magical Mist. This is that really cool card that Yugi always used in the show, and I was like so stoked when I saw that they actually made it, and that they actually managed to make it like viable for Summon Skull, because the actual text of the card is select one Summon Skull or Thunder type monster, so it can be used with either or of those things. Um, to destroy all monsters your opponent controls with defense lower than the attack of, in this case, Summon Skull. That's great. 2,500 at least, unless you've got your field spell advantage, which gives you 3,000. Even better. Contract with the Abyss, that's to bring out the ritual monster, the Archfiend's Awakening. Raigeki. Eventually Harpy's Feather Duster, but still waiting on another copy of that. The only copy I have is currently in my raw deck. Mystical Space Typhoon, Monster Reborn, Gold Sarcophagus, Allure of Darkness for draw power, uh, Pot of Avarice eventually. I don't have a copy of it right now, but I know that it's coming in the deck. So that's another card that's getting teched in. Resonator Engine, Card Advance. That's the card that helps to bring out Obelisk Good. Polymerization and Fusion Recovery. Inferno Reckless Summoning. And then I'm still missing all of those God Support spells, which, um, you know, they'll be coming out eventually when I get them. Traps. Two Sinister Yorishiros. Two Hate Busters. Mirror Force, Dark Light, which I might replace with Level Resist Wall. I want to see if that card's any good. It sounds like it's going to be pretty good, especially for swarming your field. Call of the Haunted, and two Dark Bribes. And that does it for the deck, for the Obelisk deck. For the extra deck, it pretty much revolves around um, 
mostly Red Dragon Archfiend. And the only non-Red Dragon Archfiend is Red Supernova Dragon, just because I pulled so many of them out of Ghosts from the Past that I figured I had to give it a shot and use it. Um, but other than that, uh, the only other Red Dragon Archfiend cards are the ones that include Archfiend in the name, so no Majestic Red Dragon or anything like that. So I've got all the hot Red Dragon Archfiends, King Calamity, um, Bane, and Abyss, and Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. It's a different, like a different version of Red Dragon Archfiend. They all have slightly different effects. And all those higher level monsters, King Calamity's 12. Um, I think that's 10 and 9 for Abyss. Nine, yeah, nine for Abyss. And they all help to bring out other tuners, which help you to special summon them. And that's really cool. And then I also have Tyrant Red Dragon Archfiend, and Scarlet Red Dragon Archfiend, and of course Red Dragon Archfiend itself. And then I've got the Summon Skull monsters for the extra deck, which are the Synchro Archfiend's Call, the Fusion Archfiend's Manifestation, and the Xyz Monster, Archfiend's Ascent. And then we've got that retrained Black Skull Dragon I was talking about, Archfiend Black Skull Dragon. This guy is great because he's e easier to summon. You don't need the specific monsters. You can use those Gemini monsters if you want, which is super cool. And he has an effect where Black Skull Dragon does not. So, you know, it's always better to have something that does something rather than something that, that does nothing, right? Thought Ruler Archfiend and Chaos King Archfiend. And that rounds out the Obelisk deck, which is hopefully going to get even better once I get the actual God decks in the mail, hopefully soon. I actually did get confirmation um, today that they're going to be shipped soon, I think. I don't think it's actually shipped, but I, I know that it's like in the process of being shipped far as I know. But, you know, so be on the lookout for that release. It'll be an unboxing, and I'll probably do separate videos where I tech the new cards into the Slifer and Obelisk decks. Um, Alright, so that was my profile for all three of my god decks pre-getting the new god decks. So, um, thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Believe in the heart of the cards. Bye.